Good morning. Today we are going to do a day in the life. Every morning I get up and I let my doggies out. I have three. You've probably seen them in the videos. This is Chipper right here as he pees on this plant. And I've got a Frenchie and I've got Orbit who's running around somewhere back here. It sounds beautiful. The birds are chirping. You can probably hear them. I love this view in the morning. I gotta get these dogs inside because, oh, I can hear one of my chickens is laying an egg right now. Swing you around and I'll show you what the garden's looking like. Well, this little stinker just ran out from the front of my property, which isn't good. So we are only fenced on three sides. The front part is not fenced. That's definitely a project my husband and I hope to get to this year so that these guys can't run off whenever they decide to when we're out here. And this guy's running from the front of the property too, so I don't know where they went. Come on, Orbit, Tibro, come. So typically on sun Sunday mornings, I get up and I edit a video, so we're gonna do that this morning. And then I've got some soap to cut because I made a bunch of soap last night. I do have a video of that for you guys if you wanna see that. And I'll probably get out in the garden this afternoon and do some last planting. We're kind of at this interesting stage at the garden where it's almost completely planted out. I did harvest some radishes and some cilantro last night for dinner, but we're almost at that point where it's all planted and you just sit and wait and you wait for the big harvest. So I'm excited to have that. I'm excited to have that spot almost here. Orbit, come! Because it's really busy, the push to get everything planted and then you've got a little bit of a lull and you get to harvest just a little bit of things and then the big harvest comes. So it kind of gives you a break between the big planting and the big harvest. So let's get something to drink and we are gonna go ahead and get a video edited. I got my decaf coffee here, about to edit a new video. And these are my little editing friends. Gizmo's usually up here with us, but for some reason he doesn't want to lay with us today. It typically takes me about three hours to edit a video from start to finish, and that includes choosing the thumbnail and writing the description. So I will be here, it's 7.40 right now. So I will see you guys back in a little bit. Um, this is actually all the freezer meals I have left. So I got my video published and someone brought me coffee. My husband's friends over and they're actually streaming some. What are you guys watching? They're it's embarrassed a, to say. A small streamer. A small There's streamer. A small streamer that we're watching. There's a small streamer that they're watching. So I'm done in here. <laughs> I'm in the, actually in the media room. And I'm going to go ahead and take a shower and we're going to get going with this day. I'm glad I got up early to do this video. <laughs> It's Sunday, which means I should probably get some laundry going. It's actually a little bit later. I think it's like, it's 11.30. When I got off the video with you guys, my husband started putting on fail blogs. I don't know if you guys have ever watched those on YouTube. They're basically like America's Funniest Home Videos, but it's a YouTube channel. And we got a little sucked in and we watched a bunch of those. So I got showered and now it's time to do some laundry. Here's clean laundry. I'm going to rotate it. I'm keeping my lint because this makes the best fire starters. We heated our house this winter with our wood stove for the first time. Let me get the dryer going. And we absolutely loved it. So we're gonna keep doing that from now on. I actually got some stuff at Goodwill. So before I start this load, I'm gonna run out and I'm gonna show you what I got. I'll show you a little Goodwill haul and then I'll get them washed up so that I can use what I got. I can't find my keys and I sure hope I didn't leave my purse in my car, uh, which I've been known to do. At least I parked my car on the back of my property. But let's take a look and see. Drives my husband crazy, as it should, because my purse is right here. Good thing I live in a pretty safe community. I almost forgot, I came out here to get the Goodwill stuff. I also got a few aprons actually at World Market and I'll show you those. And this is the Goodwill stuff, so let's bring it inside. The aprons in the videos that I've been wearing, they were like eight bucks off Amazon and they're terrible. They've, they're completely broken. You might not have noticed, but the straps have actually broken off the sides, like where you tie in the back. So I have to 
tie the apron to the strap so that I can tie it around my back. And these are way better quality from Old Market and they're beautiful. So the first thing I got at Goodwill was this robe. It seems like pretty good quality. I, I paid $9 for it. The only robe I have is that robe you guys saw this morning. I just think it seems like really good quality. Um, and because we heat our house with the wood stove, like I mentioned earlier, that robe I have is kind of mesh. So it's actually kind of cold and it's a short one and it's only knee length. And this one goes to the ankles and it's pretty fleecy and warm. So I figured this would be a great robe for this winter. And then I found this cute little sweater that's kind of knee length and a new day. I don't think it's any fancy brand or anything. And it just has kind of the cute pattern on the back, like a checkered pattern. So this is definitely gonna be like a fall thing. This is a flannel I got. It's kind of oversized and I paid $6 for this. It definitely needs a washing. I think there's cat hair on it, which is pretty gross. I thought this would be nice in the garden when it's a little bit chilly for just a nice little flannel. I got four Pyrex dishes. Goodwill's pricing is kind of weird because I got two bigger ones and two smaller ones. I think the smaller ones are actually nine by 13 and the bigger ones are 15 by something. And they were all different prices, which is weird. But because I've been doing those freezer cookie meals, I don't wanna keep buying those foil pans because it seems like a waste of money and kind of like, I don't want that just ending up in the landfill. So I wanna to try to build up my collection of Pyrex so that I can actually just freeze in these. You can freeze in Pyrex, no problem. For that whole Goodwill haul, I paid $56.33 and that included taxes. My mother-in-law, these are from Goodwill too. She just bought me a few candy jars and those were in my car, so I thought I'd show you that as well. And here are my aprons. I'm gonna try these on for you. They're super cute. Turn some lights on. I'm no professional YouTuber here. So this is the first one. It's kind of got some cute little stripes to it. This was only $5.99, and I thought that this one would be kind of nice in the garden. Not when I'm like making a bunch of messy stuff, but just when I need something that I can use to wipe my hands with. It's just kind of cute. For five bucks, I figured it would be a good addition. The next one I got, it's got two eyelets, which are really nice quality. It's got a tie here so I can adjust it up there. And then two pockets and it ties in the back. I'll probably actually tie it in the front because the ties are pretty long. This is a little bit of a shorter apron and it does have two pockets here, which are really helpful. And so this one's just kind of cute too. I thought that this one would be nice for canning or cooking or whatever it might be. And they're all 100% cotton, which I really like. The last one's green and it actually has the crisscross ties in the back. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about that, but I think I'm gonna like it. I've never owned an apron like this before. And it just fits like this. I think I need to tighten it just a little bit. This is a little bit heavier duty. It's almost, it is 100% cotton. Feels a little bit more like denim-y-ish. Not quite that thick, but it definitely has a little bit more texture to it than say the blue one. This one's pretty thin. But I thought that this one was cute too. I think I need to tighten these. Yeah, that fits a little bit better. I think these are great. These are gonna be good for cooking and canning and all the things that I do around here to protect my clothes. I'm really bad about splashing and stuff and for years I just didn't want to pay the money to buy an apron. So that's why I went cheap on Amazon and bought those aprons, but they're garbage. I mean, I can't even give them to Goodwill because they're just completely broken. And so I'm really happy that I decided to finally go ahead and invest in some nice aprons. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Goodwill stuff washed up. I tried them on yesterday. Well, Goodwill doesn't let you try things on right now, so I just put them on over, let me turn the light on, my clothes. And because I just showered, I really don't wanna do that right now. So we're gonna get these in the wash, washed up.
So I completely ruined the soap. I can actually feel it in my hands. It's lye heavy. When I quadrupled the batch, I must have miscalculated on the lye and it's not really safe for your skin to use. So this is the soap I made yesterday and it's beautiful. And I used the same recipe, but I clearly messed up on the ratios when I was quadrupling it. This is six pounds of tallow that I rendered and just messed up. So, shoot. <laughs> yeah, look at this, it ate through the tin foil. So I cannot use that on your skin, that's dangerous. Well, I'm glad that I did shoot a video on how to make the correct recipe, the one I did yesterday, and that one turned out perfect and beautiful. So clearly I need to be more careful when I'm quadrupling uh, recipes, or I should just do one batch at a time or find a large recipe or something, because my math clearly was not correct on this. Because this is a huge bummer. I'm so disappointed. I was researching and you can turn it into laundry soap. So I'm gonna try that. I don't wanna waste all this. This is a lot. Um, it's not a lot of money that I wasted necessarily because the fat was free and I guess I had to pay for the lye and the essential oils, but that wasn't much money. But I really don't wanna waste it. I, this was a lot of work put into this. And so I'm gonna try to make laundry soap out of it. I've made homemade laundry detergent before and it wasn't my favorite. Um, but I'm gonna do some research and see what I can do. If you guys have ever made laundry detergent and it works for you, will you guys let me know a recipe that works well um, because I'm pretty disappointed in this. <laughs> I've decided to go ahead and get dinner out. One thing that I didn't fail on was these freezer meals. So I'm gonna get enchiladas out and we'll have that for dinner. So I'm gonna get this out now and let it thaw for a little bit before dinner time. It's about noon right now. So I have the laundry room emptied. I have another load going. So I figured now is a good time to go head out to the garden and spend some time out there because I've kind of got the inside chores done. I think it's like 82 out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my shirt. <laughs> There was some bacon in there that was kind of freezer burnt and bad. So that's what they're chasing in there, some bacon bits, which they're loving it. So what I'm thinking about doing today is I prepped this area yesterday. I'm gonna plant out some more tomatoes. I got this trellis planted out yesterday. If you watched my last garden tour video, I alluded to planting tomatoes in a walkway. And this is what I meant. My husband helped me prep this last night. I think when I originally tilled this area, cause this used to be a field when we bought our property, I don't think I actually tilled this far because I got some, there's a rock there and there's a rock there, huge rocks out from right here. And so I really appreciated his help. And then I amended this soil and planted some tomatoes. I have four celebrities, two Dr. Witchies, three red centerfill, centerfill, um, it's a French word, I guess it means hundred because it creates these huge tomato clusters and then three chocolate stripe. I wanted to put the cherry tomato and the snacking tomatoes here because it's kind of the entrance into the garden. The chocolate are my husband's favorite. So I have a, quite a few more tomatoes to get planted today. I just went ahead and turned on the sprinkler system. My husband built me this amazing sprinkler system last summer because some areas it sprays over the bed a little bit into the walkways and I want to see where that is because if you look over here, let me show you. I have all these pots here my sister gifted me. I have some square rectangle ones here and some round ones. And what I thought I would do to maximize my space in my garden is to plant in these planters and put them in the walkways where the sprinkler system um, oversprays so that I don't have to worry about watering them with a hose. There are a couple areas I do have to water with hoses. This tomato trellis, those tomato trellises, my loofah trellis, and my corn patch and where I'm gonna be planting the tomatoes today. So if I can minimize how much hand watering I have to do, I don't mind doing it. I actually really like doing it, but it does take time and I don't have a ton of time. Last night I filled these bins up halfway with just composted horse manure, pretty composted horse manure. 
and then I topped it with some of this store-bought potting soil. I've got a bucket of seeds. I don't know exactly what I'm going to plant in those yet, but for now we're going to go ahead and get those tomatoes planted because they really need to get into the ground and also the tomatillos. I said earlier this year that I wasn't going to plant that many tomatoes because I already have enough tomatoes to get me through next year canned up and I was mostly going to focus on fresh eating tomatoes this year, but between the tomatoes I purchased after I lost all my tomatoes to the freeze and the tomatoes I started after that and a flat of tomatoes that my coworker gave me, I'm gonna have, I think, hopefully, we'll see, but oodles and oodles of tomatoes, because I think I'm already at like 60 plants. That might be an over-exaggeration. I'll count them, but I, I think there's a lot. So let's just get to it. So we are done planting this tomato area. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what varieties I just planted. I planted two tomatillos, a brandy wine for my coworker, and then those are three Martha Washingtons that I started from seed April 11th, and they're looking pretty good. And over here, we have one, two Wisconsin 55s. I got those seeds from Johnny Seeds. I started those April 11th as well. That one right there is called Chef's Choice from a coworker. And then the last three are ones that I started from seed on April 11th as well, and those are big beef. I'm thrilled to have that done. I just hope this produces well. I'm really excited for the tomatillos. I didn't grow tomatillos last year. This is my first time ever growing tomatillos. I did make green salsa last year out of my green tomatoes, and it was really good. I think the salsa verde with actual tomatillos will be better than with the green tomatoes. So let's go ahead and get the planters planted. I had to take a little bit of a break inside because one, I had to get a beverage, but two, I do all my recording on my cell phone. Do you wanna come outside? No, it's too hot. My little friend, she likes to be my gardening buddy, but sometimes it gets too hot for him. Um, so I do all my recording on my cell phone and sometimes it needs a little bit of a break to recharge. So that's what I just did. I sat out here and sunbathed just a little bit Normally I do my gardening in my swimsuit top, but obviously if you guys are in my garden with me, I'm not gonna subject you to watching me garden in my swimsuit. <laughs> so um, I wanna try to avoid some of those tan lines in my back if I can help it. So I thought I'd just take that opportunity to sunbathe just a little bit because for it to be 80 degrees in May in the Pacific Northwest, you gotta take advantage of it when you can. So I was going to sit down and plant those pots, but I got distracted and posted a reel on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can. It's just Acre Homestead. It's now 5 o'clock almost. It's 4.51. I'm going to go ahead and get this enchiladas in the oven. It's still kind of frozen, even though it's been out of the oven for, I don't know, like four hours. So I'm just going to turn it on 300 degrees and kind of let it thaw slash start to cook in the oven. And then I'm going to go out and plant those pots now. And when I come back in, I'll turn it up so that it can actually finish baking. This is how we eat home cooked food. Even though I'm busy and I garden and I work full time, we don't eat out anymore. Before the pandemic hit, we used to eat out twice a week. We would usually get takeout or something quick and easy on the weekday if I didn't want to cook something. And we would go out with friends, typically or on a date, but typically we went out with friends on the weekdays. And when the pandemic hit, I lost my job for 10 weeks. So obviously we stopped eating out. We stopped any frivolous activities and we just kind of got used to that. And now eating out is more of a pleasure thing. It's a special occasion thing. We only eat out maybe once a month now, and we did the math on how much we spent in 2019 versus 2020, and we saved over $5,000 on eating out. We did not, well, I guess I didn't. I guess my husband knew how much money we were spending on eating out, but I didn't realize how much money we were spending on eating out. And when that figure was right in front of you, I was like, wow, I'd rather have that $5,000 in my bank than eating it. So anyway, all that to say is we rarely eat out and food prep and meal prep is the way that working full time, gardening, YouTubing, 
and doing all the things I'm able to do that is by meal prep. So actually, I think this coming weekend, I'm gonna be doing another freezer cooking meal because I'm down to like five in my freezer and that's just not enough. So um, stay tuned for that. But let's go back outside. I think Gizmo's gonna come with us this time. And we are gonna go ahead, come on Gizmo. And we are gonna go uh, plant those planter boxes finally. I just grabbed a bunch of random seeds. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna plant in them, um, but we will figure it out together. I'm thinking more like herbs and maybe a couple flowers and things like that. Maybe some bush beans, but let's figure it out together. I just got a text that we actually have to head to dinner for a graduation dinner, which I really want to go to. So we're going to get planting really quick and we're going to make some fast decisions on what to plant. I was going to kind of mull over this for a little bit and kind of take my time. But I think sometimes that's the best thing is just get seeds in the ground and see what grows. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got this little bucket here. And I still have to take a shower because I am sweaty. It is toasty out here. So let's see what we've got. I already told you guys what I have in here. The bottom half is compost and the top half is that soil that I purchased. Ooh. Oh no, this is not good. Not good at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so water apparently got in here because I have a ton of sprouting seeds. This is really bad. So I'm glad I'm talking to you guys because I'm gonna go ahead and get these sprouted seeds in here. These are, uh, this is really bad, I don't know. Oh my gosh, look at that. I don't know how this happened. So these are dragon tongue beans and I'll just plant these because I was thinking I might plant some bush beans in here and they've already sprouted. I cannot, I don't know what happened. I am no professional gardener, but I certainly know you should not let seeds get wet because that's not good. We're not gonna let these go to weast. I'm really glad that I'm doing this with you guys because the last thing I wanna do is pay for seeds and then completely destroy them because I let them go to waste. I don't know what happened. Can you guys see they're pre-sprouted? So I guess I just saved myself a step. So I'm just gonna randomly, well not randomly, but I'm gonna put them a couple inches apart. All right, so these two are planted. So that was dragon tongue beans. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot believe this happened. That's a lot. There's no way I'm going to be able to plant all these provider beans. These are kind of expensive seeds, too. Oh, my gosh. So I have some jade bush beans. Let's see if these... Yep, these sprouted, too. Okay, so we'll do jade bush beans in here. I'm gonna plant these pretty heavy because I don't know what is actually gonna survive this trauma that I've created for these beans. Well, I'm glad that my carrots are in this plastic container because these, I really like these carrots and I have already a ton of echinacea planted and sprouted, so I don't have to worry about that. But I've got some Oregon beans. I'm gonna find a place in the garden for these. Oh my gosh. My Cinderella pumpkins were already planted out 100%. These are some Dollar Tree, so this was a 25 cent pack, so I don't have to worry about that. My Asian yard long beans are sprouted. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Can you see in there all those sprouts? So I think I'm gonna do the provider bush beans in the rest of these pots. I'm really glad I decided to get to that because I would have completely lost all that seed if I hadn't. I like how I said, we don't go out to eat very often and then I'm gonna rush off to eat tonight. But it's a graduation dinner and that's like what I was saying earlier is that, you know, we try to make sure when we go out to eat now it's for a special occasion and I think a graduation is a special occasion. So I am gonna get these watered. 
I'm gonna put them around the beds where I see the watermark so that I know they're gonna be watered in the morning. I have my uh, sprinkler set to water every morning. I had an aha moment. So I was trying to think, where am I gonna plant those peas? I know I ended this video already, but I am going to plant them. Let me show you. I'm gonna go ahead and plant the peas along this tomato trellis. Over here, I've companion planted some beans with my tomatoes over there and they seem to be doing really well so far so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add them here if they die that's fine I've already killed the seed basically I don't have anywhere in my raised beds to put them because I'm out of trellis space if they don't do well here oh well because I've basically already killed them in their packaging because you know you really shouldn't water your seeds when they're stored that's just a beginner mistake I use these hay bales kind of as a workstation. These hay bales are gonna be planted with sweet potatoes actually. And so eventually I'm not gonna be able to use it, but I'm guessing what happened is they got wet somehow when I used the hose. And because I must not have noticed, that's what happened. But with the green beans, hopefully I just pre-sprouted my green beans and I'm gonna lose a little bit of seed, but beginner error, oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it, not gonna lose sleep over it. I'm just gonna enjoy the process. So I hope you guys can be encouraged that not everything has to go well or right to garden <laughs> because um, that's not really my personality. I'm kind of just like, let's just make it work. Let's just figure it out. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna plant the peas along this trellis here. And I think the garden is basically planted except for the sweet potatoes. And I can't plant sweet potatoes out for another couple weeks. The other seeds that got wet were the Asian long beans and the provider beans. But along these tomatoes, I planted the Asian long beans so they can grow up this trellis and the provider beans along this side, which are bush beans, so they should be okay. And then I went over here if you watch my potato planting video, my Purple Majesty one, none of them ever sprouted. And I tried to dig for them and I couldn't find them. So I figured they probably just rotted in the ground. Those were seed potatoes that I saved. So I must have done something wrong. So I went ahead and did provider beans in here too. And I basically think that we are planted out. Except for this one, there's just a couple weeds in there and a couple volunteer potatoes. But we're gonna put the sweet potatoes there. And then I went ahead and put some provider beans in there too because that was another empty space. So I tried to get all those damaged seeds planted. I think the only thing I didn't get planted out was the echinacea, but I have enough echinacea, I think, growing in one of those beds over there. So I think we're gonna be good. So as long as I didn't completely destroy those beans, I think that these containers contain the majority of those provider beans. I think we're gonna be okay, and I think we're gonna save the seeds, which is pretty exciting. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today as I did chores inside and outside. I love getting out in the garden, so I try to get those inside chores done sooner than later so that I can be out here and enjoy the sunshine. It was beautiful today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I need to go inside and shower. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see what this garden is going to be looking like in the coming weeks and months and what I'm going to do to preserve hopefully the food that I get, go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. And if you want to watch more of my videos, some will pop up right here. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.